uncomfortable, Michael. But yeah, close. That was that was uncomfortable. Was that on tape? That Let's not put that on the edit, please. How you doing, man? This is this is way too close. But yet I haven't let go. I haven't let go, even though it's too, even though I'm really uncomfortable. I'm really uncomfortable. Building Science Summer Camp. This is the Westford Symposium on Building Science. Look who I ran into. The Green Police. You've seen these guys yeah. on all kinds of conferences doing green PD work. Carl. Carl Seville. Seville. Carl, yes. Now, you're a former builder, but now you're doing... I, I'm a recovery contractor, and now I do green building consulting and certification, and I am the green building curmudgeon. Yes, the green building curmudgeon. I forgot about that lo that moniker as well. And Michael Anshul. Michael, tell me what you're doing these days. Uh, you know, I still, uh, I'm still in Minneapolis. We're still a design build firm. We're still right. designing and building stuff. And then going out and, and doing the green police stuff when we have a chance. Flex, uh, I think we have to assume 30% compression for most projects, yep. and that's a problem. But I did like that Gavin uh, pointed out really clearly BTUs matter, yep. and that the hybrid systems uh, using flex for straight runs and using rigid for your turn for your turns. That was kind of brilliant. I never yeah. really thought about it that way. That was really interesting. That, like flex is only good if it's not flexible, right. and you use the rigid for the turns. It's like Wow, it's like it's quite it's quite a revelation. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and you know, honestly, I've heard of this a million times, but I never really yeah. thought about it. Fully stretched out flex duct, if you're at its full rate, is basically the same as hard pipe. But have you ever seen it before? No, we've never that's seen right. that before. And a couple of great takeaways for me: uh, some things that I use uh, that I would like to use in my everyday life. Uh, you know, back in the world. Great seminar yesterday on corrosion of yeah. uh, rebar and metal in uh, very. Uh, salty environments mm -hmm. and uh, the, the little tidbit takeaway for me was that there's a product out there called uh, fiberglass rebar which is that? I'm gonna drop that into my specs uh, yeah. when I get the chance you know when it comes to flat roofs I've learned a ton over the years and we were talking about flat roof specs earlier you you told me a couple things I thought were pretty interesting tell me about those two specs we were talking about for flat roofs that you like one of them is a uh, grace uh, construction products now they just call themselves GCP mm -hmm. uh, they make a product called Silcor which is a liquid applied uh, membrane uh, and the reason I spec it, I, I spec it for uh, those two slab uh, structures that are make the floor of a garage above a, an interior living space uh. and I spec it as the waterproofing between the slabs because it um, is very chemically uh, resistant so it doesn't dissolve if I get a little bit of gasoline or motor oil on it. Interesting and how about how about some of the other products you like so on that? The other one I really like is Kemper System products. They have a variety of products um, but the, the reason I like to spec Kemper is you can sand it, it's incredibly durable. All right, so here's two Actually, of my old buddies. This, small one. this guy right here got me out of the mold crisis in the early 2000s. I thought he got you out of jail. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> nothing that we can talk about on camera, but maybe. <laughs> and I don't know if you know Craig, president of Quick Flash. Coming to you live from After Party. You know this guy, right? John Simmelhack. Hey, Matt. John, last year we did a 30 minute interview. You come back and Come back and watch that 30 minute interview anytime it's on YouTube. Yep. It was a little long. And y'all know y'all know Neil Randall too? <laughs> hey, Neil Randall out of St. Louis, Missouri area. Two of the biggest HVAC nerds you'll ever meet. All right, what'd you guys learn today? What was the best thing you learned today? Uh, you know, the stucco, I knew stucco was finicky, uh -huh. but that just, just blew me away. They were talking more than finicky. They were talking failure today. Right, right. And it's just, uh, I'm extra resolved to not let my clients put stucco on a building. Interesting. So your takeaway was not, here's how to do it right, but just not, don't do stucco. I was not reassured. Yeah. <laughs> my buddy, Wynn White. So good to see you, Wynn. Wynn's an engineer in Baton Rouge, an expert in mold, all things environmental. You mainly do remediation though work, right? Well, it's uh, really most of our work's asbestos and lead, okay. and then we do a lot of water intrusion, and mold is just a symptom of water intrusion. Right, right. So, when what did you learn today? What was your big takeaway from today's sessions? I think my biggest takeaway was when it comes to brick, and, and I've been a big uh, fan of not painting your brick. It just, brick is a great building material. It's a great cladding material. But it's like any other cladding, you have to flash all the openings properly or you're going to have trouble. Putting a coating of waterproofing or paint on it yeah. is not going to solve your problem no. and it's going to create some other issues for you. 
So interesting today, uh, you know, you and I both lived through the mold crisis of the early 2000s. The stucco guy today, when he was talking about stucco failures, made it seem like stucco is the next big uh, crisis that's going to hit us all over the country. I think my takeaway from that program was stucco is a cladding like any other. If you don't prepare the openings properly, yep. it does not matter what the cladding is. It, you're going to have water intrusion and mold and, and failure. You ever do any remediation on those hundred year old beautiful Baton Rouge houses? How do those fare over the years? I try to stay away from residential projects. My saying is, I can't keep my wife happy. What would make <laughs> me think I could keep your wife happy? <laughs> I think we need to end it right there. Hey, we're back, and guess who I tracked down? My old buddy Bart. Tell me, tell me about Flex Duck, Bart. You and I both yeah. talked about uh, Flex. There's a ton of mixed conceptions about it. What were your takeaways on the Flex Duck conversation? We talk about it all the time, right, in the industry. It's like, do this, don't do that. Like, there's these like kind of like little rules. Right. Put Flex is bad. Flex is bad. You should use rigid and all that stuff. And the reality of it is, is no matter what product you're using, using it correctly. It's, it, it's, it's just the paramount thing you got to do yep. to begin with, right? And you, yeah. you can have any, it's like I tell most people, I go, you can have a 95% efficient boiler, furnace, whatever it is. If you have a really crappy delivery system, right. you, you still have a 90%, you're still 90% efficient yep. at really supplying crap. Uh, Dr. Claudette from LSU, thanks so much for, uh, for your incredible presentation yesterday. I wanted it to have some entertainment value because this is summer camp. <laughs> but at the same time, kind of give a message of the importance of resilience and in including that and, and share a little bit of the story of my work with Building Science Corporation and, and through all the disasters that we've had. And you did an incredible job, Dr. Claudette. And um, we're going to put a link in the description below uh, for your LSU Ag site because okay. um, you guys have the LA house there, a demonstration right. house that you worked on May for a I long correct time. correct you. We pronounce it La House because L.A. is Los Angeles. So <laughs> La House, pardon me. It's in it's in Baton Rouge if you've never been Absolutely. before. Absolutely, it's on the LSU campus and it's open to the public Monday through Friday. It's really there, kind of like an educational museum. Only it's all about high performance housing done multiple different ways. I got my buddy Sean, builder remodeler down in New Orleans. He gave me a great tip as we were talking about this the other day when we were we were talking in class. Uh, one thing that you coach people to do on their own houses when they're building or remodeling is Nisius Boracare with the mold guard, right? Absolutely. Tell me about that. We use that on every single house and it's it's a really simple application. Uh, you mix it, I think it's a five to one ratio. You mix it, you spray it with, you can pump use an, a pump sprayer or an airless sprayer. Uh -huh. And we just do that before the insulation. It goes back in and that's uh, that gives me a level of confidence that you know we've treated uh, for not only uh, microbial growth in the future, but also um, you know termites, which are a huge problem there. Yeah. Are you using any paperless drywall in your houses? Like one of the things she was talking about was, you know, the bottom four feet, put a chair rail in, put a break in your yeah. uh, in your drywall there at that four foot level, hold your drywall up a couple inches and then put your base on. So you, if you had a flood event, you could take that base off. You could dry that stud bay. Uh, yeah, I was exactly. thinking, you know, I wonder if builders like you and, and your area are gone to, to uh, paperless. So, you know, the way that we do it is, uh, and I've done it a number of, in, of situations, because now we have houses that are, you know, they're, they're up in the air, but the ma main entrance to the house might be uh, through a, a, a hall or an open, you know, downstairs, and then the stairs will be covered. Yeah. And so that downstairs area has the potential of being flooded. So what we do is we use a, uh, so I'll use a chair rail, and I'll, I'll attach the chair rail only to the upper half. And the, the lower area then has, you can have, we use, uh, instead of the paperless drywall, I use typically a, a hardy board or hardy, uh, like a sheet goods, yeah, yeah. you know, the stucco or the, uh, the, looks like the old T111. Yeah, yeah. And then what I do, um, I've done this a d couple of different times, but um, what, what I like to do is I use uh, stainless steel screws in a two by six, mm -hmm. and then I do a dado on the back side of it. And then sometimes if it's fancy house, we'll put like a little uh, cap, base cap there. But most of the time it's just a, a two by six with a dado that the board will actually sit in. And so we'll throw a couple of trim nails in to like kind of still in some caulk. But primarily all you have to do is like push it in and lift it up and it comes right out, you know. That's so cool. Very and, then, and then the whole bottom four feet is totally exposed. Four foot, so, and we pull out the insulation. If we, it looks like a wainscot to me. Yeah, it looks like a wainscot. It looks like you did a nice improvement to, the, to that area. 
And that's legit. Nice job, man. Hey, the stuff we talked about, a couple of those things, the Amazon link, uh, the LSU presentation, I'll put the links in the description below yeah, very good. So, so you can see what we're talking about here. Yeah. Uh, is a fantastic resource that um, more people need to take advantage of, both in Louisiana and, and come visit it. It's awesome. Yeah, the demonstration house, pretty awesome. I'll put a link to that, too. Yeah. Go follow Sean on Instagram. Good seeing you, buddy. I'll see you next year at Building Science Summer Camp 2018.